this is our ADU webinar series. We'll be focusing on ADUs of different aspects and specifically the wellness pod, our standard, our flagship unit, um, and just giving information about ADUs, how they can benefit you as a homeowner, as a aging adult, or uh, different ways that you can finance ADUs. So we'll go through a whole series just talking about the details of ADUs and wellness pods. So definitely want this to be a little bit more casual, uh, casual, a little bit more informative. So um, I will have some visual aids, but for the most part, um, it'll be conversational. And then at the end, any specific questions that anyone has, we can drop those in the chat. And like Laura said, we'll go through at the end and make sure we get all of those questions answered for you guys. So um, I hope you enjoy the series. Um, today is a first uh, iteration. So it'll be a general overview of ADUs and the wellness pod. And then deeper as we go deeper into this series over the next couple of months, uh, we'll go deeper to each subject. And uh, like Laura alluded to, we'll have special guests on who can explain in depth about their aspects of ADUs, their um, experience with ADUs and the legislation, finance, and different things about it. So um, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen just so everyone can follow along. All right, are we good there? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so ADU Master Series, Episode 1, The Benefits of a Wellness Pod um, and General Understanding of ADUs. One second. All right, this is uh, a breakdown kind of of the hour, just so everyone knows exactly where we are, can jump to a certain section in the future um, if I believe we'll have this recorded. So um, if you want to kind of review or understand what we're going to talk about today, here's that information. So again, we'll do a quick intro, um, general ADUs, the wellness company, and then understanding ADUs, the different types of ADUs that exist today, including the, the wellness pod. Then the benefits of ADUs for seniors, which obviously is a specialty for wellness. Um, it's where we started in the senior space. And then ADUs and property value. So general, uh, generally for homeowners, what are the benefits of an ADU uh, when it comes to property value? Then some background on designing and building ADUs. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then overcoming some of the challenges that folks have faced um, with ADUs and um, some of the legislation has made a little bit easier for us to build. And then uh, again, at the, at the end, um, leaving a, a good amount of time to answer any questions that anybody has. All right, let's get into it. So first up, what is an ADU? Um, and I will reference back to some things as far as um, some of the details and notes and things like that. So if, uh, it sounds like I'm reading it's because I am, because I don't want to leave you guys or leave out any important information uh, for you folks. So um, an ADU is an accessory dwelling, uh, dwelling unit. And it basically is located on the property with a main dwelling unit. So I know folks are sometimes confused about the difference between a tiny home or an ADU. So an ADU, there must be a main dwelling on the property for it to be considered an ADU. And then there's various forms of ADUs. There's attached garage conversions, basement conversions, um, detached standalone units like the wellness pod. And um, ADUs offer a ton of flexible housing solutions. So um, often people use it for rental income, um, accommodating family members, aging in place, or as well as caregivers um, housed on the property. So um, California's housing landscape is facing some unique uh, issues. And I'll explain how ADUs can create a uh, solution that offers a win-win scenario um, for California homeowners. Um, I think this uh, versatile versatile living uh, space can be added to properties to create property value or to increase property value, as well as provide additional housing for um, the California housing crisis that we're in currently. So um, in this webinar, I'll dive into the dual benefits of ADUs, um, how they can empower seniors and uh, allow an opportunity for seniors to age in place in the communities that they currently uh, live in. 
as well as um, unlocking the potential for adding uh, value to your property. So let's jump into it. Um, next, how can ADUs benefit our aging loved ones? So um, again, I'll go a little bit deeper into this later, but there's five principles that we really live by when we created our company. Um, the ability to provide proximity to family and loved ones for aging, uh, our aging parents or grandparents or family members. Um, the ability to create a preventative uh, environment that allows seniors to age in place more independently with more dignity, um, as well as uh, incorporate some protections into the unit. So softball, flooring, grab bars, things like that, that folks can really use when they're aging in place. And then process. So process is big for us. We really wanted to create a simple process for our customers uh, where they can get all the things they needed in one place without having to um, deal with multiple different uh, parties when they're trying to build an ADU. And then last but not least is price. Um, again, understanding that a lot of our seniors are on a fixed income or maybe cash rich, but or sorry, house rich, but cash poor. Um, we like to operate on a flat rate pricing and we're very transparent with our pricing. So that's extremely important to us as we're dealing with our aging loved ones. Um, again, touched on a little bit, ADUs and the real solution to California's housing crisis, um, really creating that missing middle housing. Um, right now, I think the average homes in California go anywhere from 700,000 to a million plus dollars. So um, when we're looking at ADUs that can come in around $300,000, $200,000 even, um, as far down as $150,000 for certain builds and models, um, I think this creates a, a excellent opportunity to create affordable housing throughout the state. And then last but, uh, but not least is a white glove service for our customers. So again, process being a big thing for us um, in the senior space, we offer everything from the start with design to permitting the units, all the way through construction. And even after construction, we have the ability to coordinate all the services that you could potentially need from maintenance, laundry, even on to um, senior care services. So that's really important to the wellness company. All right. So types of ADUs. Um, there's several types of ADUs um, and they all have different benefits and certain restrictions. And so I'll jump into that a little bit. Uh, first, we have a JADU. You may have heard of that. That's a junior ADU. Uh, JADU is a unit that's attached or excuse me, that is created within an existing footprint of a home. So if you have a garage or a basement or a spare bedroom that you want to convert to an ADU, they do allow that throughout the state. Some limitations, again, 500 square feet is a limit in size that you cannot go larger than that. Um, you can share facilities. So bathroom facilities, kitchen facilities can be shared, um, but you do have to have a separate entrance for that ADU to be considered an ADU. So that's a JADU. Next, we have attached, which is similar to a JADU, but the major differences are an attached ADU can be built up to 1,200 square feet or 50% of the home square footage. So um, what that allows is, again, if I have a good size backyard, but not quite enough space to do a detached ADU, then I can build onto my existing home, have an exterior entrance. Again, you cannot share facilities with an attached ADU, so you need a bathroom and a kitchen. Um, and um, to go to take a step back, a JADU currently, I believe all cities require there to be home occupancy either in the JADU or the main dwelling if you have a JADU. An attached ADU can be used as a rental property. So basically you're creating a duplex. You don't have to live there. It can be an investment property. Next, we have a conversion, which is a version of an attached ADU. But if you have a garage or a basement, again, you can convert both of those spaces into an ADU. Um, now, if you have a detached garage, that can also be converted to an ADU. Some benefits to that are there are no setback requirements, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and you cannot change the existing footprint when you're doing a conversion. That's another stipulation. But they do have um, some exceptions to that rule. So you can add up to 150 square feet for an entrance. So if you want to add a door and an entryway, you can add up to 150 extra square feet. 
Um, you may, some of the other issues that you may run into when you're doing a conversion are, um, you may need to upgrade the foundation. So depending on the slab and the insulation and the vapor barrier in your floor, uh, you may need to do some upgrades there. As well as HERS and Title 24 consideration, which are all energy compliance uh, things that, you know, if you have a garage that's a little bit older, may not be up to date with some of those uh, codes. So you may need to upgrade those. And excuse me, last but not least is a detached ADU. And this is your typical, it's a second home on the property, completely detached from your main home. So some of the limitations or some of the considerations, you can build up to 1,200 square feet again. Um, that's the limit. And in most jurisdictions, just about all jur uh, jurisdictions throughout California, you can build up to 800 square feet without being restricted by the building department. Um, some other things to consider, you need a four foot setback, which means you have side property lines, back property lines, you need to maintain a four foot distance uh, away from those property lines. Now, we'll get into this a little bit deeper too. So once you get past a certain square footage, you can be charged impact fees. Now, the legislation that was changed between 2017 and even up until last year has eliminated a lot of those impact fees, which allows more people to build ADUs, which is great um, to add housing throughout the state. But what they don't tell you is once you get into those bigger units, they will come back and charge you those impact fees. So you got to be really careful and understand what are the nuances of the, the code um, and some of the bills that allow you to, to build throughout the state. Um, and there is no owner occupancy requirements, but there are some benefits based on which city you live in that can um, be implemented. So if you do a deed restriction, for instance, in certain cities, that means you won't sell or you'll sell at a, at a certain rate and that will allow you to either have or maintain owner occupancy or um, be relieved of that restriction. So again, these are some of the nuances of the different types of ADUs. And um, yeah, this is why it's really important to work with someone who um, is familiar with your with your local jurisdiction just because they may not they may understand a little bit more of the nuances of the codes and the um, and some of the legislation that's come down to allow you to build. And last but not least, what I'll talk about is uh, the wellness pot, which you you'll see an example of one here in the middle of my screen. Um, and we do build detached ADUs. We started uh, specializing in the senior space, so. Real big considerations around design elements specifically for seniors. So softball flooring, grab bars, larger doors, um, tunnel windows to get natural daylighting, um, things like that are different considerations for a wellness pod. Um, but again, that is a detached ADU. So I will now be moving on to the next section, which we will be covering, sorry some of the regulations around ADUs. All right, so first off, what most people know is the state of California has been really aggressive with some of the, with some of the legislation to allow us to build throughout the state. Um, so just about every city in California, you're allowed to build ADUs. There are some nuances. So there's some local approvals that you have to go through that they may have some restrictions. One of those, for instance, is a planning and zoning department. So one thing to consider when you're building an ADU is that when you build it on site, it has to match the aesthetic of the neighborhood. And that's how a lot of um, HOAs and planning departments are placing restrictions on people's ability to build. So for instance, we had a project where someone wanted to build within an HOA, the slope of the roof was so high, and I just had this conversation yesterday, the slope of the roof was so high that they wanted to do a flat roof on the ADU, but the HOA wouldn't allow them. They said it had to maintain the slope. Now, they didn't have to do the exact slope of the main home, but they had to uh, mirror the, the image of the neighborhood. So those are some ways that um, HOAs or planning departments can place restrictions. Um, there's also the potential for owner occupancy uh, uh, restrictions and HOAs, as well as, again, like we talked about earlier, JADUs. Um, parking, we've lifted a lot of those restrictions throughout the state. Um, so as long as you live within a half mile of public transit, for the most case, you don't have to add additional parking. And there are some size uh, limits and restrictions. Again, um, 
if you're looking at an attached ADU, you're looking at about 50% or less of the main home square footage. And there are some potential restrictions on land use. So if you have a 5,000 square foot lot, your home is 2,500 square foot, but you want to build an ADU and you can build up to 1,200 square feet, for instance. But you can only have, you can only take up a certain percentage of that lot with home. So if you're already taking up half with their main home and they may say the most space you can take up on your lot is 50%. Well, again, it goes back to that allowance for 800 square foot minimum home. So you would still be able to build that ADU as long as you um, kept it within three things, the 800 square feet, 16 foot height, and your four foot setback. So again, that's one of the, the nuances of the law that um, is good to understand when you're looking at building an ADU. Um, I'll jump through a couple of, couple of more of the restrictions and processes uh, real quick. Short-term rental. So a lot of the 30-day or less rentals are restricted in most cities. Um, again, understanding the local codes and restrictions will be helpful. So working with a contractor or a company like Wellness who really goes into depth with understanding the codes and the and the bills and the legislate the local legislation will be really beneficial. Um, and real quick, I'll touch on the HOAs again because that, that question has come up quite a bit. Um, HOAs can attempt to prevent you to, from building an ADU, but it by state law is now illegal for them to um, provide restrictions that make it excessively difficult to build an ADU. Now, it's very nuanced language, and the first thing that anyone looking to build within an HOA should do is contact either a local housing attorney or a company such as Wellness who's familiar with the local legislation who can get in touch with your HOA and let them know the exact legislation that you're going to use to build your ADU. So that's a good, uh, a big nuance because no HOA can prevent you from building. All right. And then cost and budgeting is another big one um, that people are less familiar with. So whenever looking at building an ADU, most folks just look at the construction costs, but there's a few other things that go into it that you should be considering. So first off is design and engineering costs. Um, some cities have pre-developed designs. You still have to take those to an architect or designer to have your site plans and your site specific elements added to that. So you still have to consider those costs. Some other costs would be um, utility hookups, uh, getting in touch with PG&E or, um, uh, or uh, your local sewer water district. Um, those are some nuances that are gonna cost you, but you may not understand that up front. We're actually looking at a project now where there's going to be a survey, potential geotech, an arborist, as well as those typical fees. So we consider all those things when we go into a build and we make sure that our customers know up front what all has to be considered to complete their build on time and on budget. So understanding some of those unforeseen costs is extremely important up front. And then last but not least is a changing in, uh, in some of the regulations. So as we move along every day, this is um, the ADU legislation really started to take hold in 2017. In 2020, 2021, they made some huge improvements as far as setbacks, height restrictions, and things like that. Um, currently, there's a bill 1020 or AB 1033, which is considering allowing uh, ADUs to be con sold as condominiums, separate from the main or the main dwelling. So these are different things that are happening constantly throughout um, our time of during construction, post-construction that can heavily affect the homeowner that we pay attention to every day. A lot of these bills were involved in with organizations like Casita Coalition who are fighting for legislation for ADUs, but understanding how that legislation is going through and changing over time can really affect our homeowners. So us staying up to date is extremely important because that can affect how you sell your ADU, that can affect um, your taxes or tax benefits. So it's really important to understand how are those laws changing over time and how can you stay up to date on those? And also again, back to local legislation is extremely important to understand because it can have small nuances separate from state law. All right. Let me see if we can go to our next screen here. 
Okay, so we'll jump into um, something that is near and dear to our hearts, benefits of ADUs for seniors. And so ADUs can generally enhance uh, the, con the concept of aging in place by providing a supportive and comfortable living environment for seniors within the, uh, within the same property and community that they've lived in for years. So that's extremely important for us. Um, wellness as a company was founded when our father suffered a debilitating stroke in 2014, and we brought him home and tried all the different solutions for, uh, for care. We know we didn't wanna go into a facility, but at the same time with our families and, and our work, schedule um, as things kept moving along it became a burden to say dad you have to sacrifice your living environment while we're sacrificing our living environment so with the new adu legislation we're able to build him his own home provide him with all the care that he needed and now he's able to thrive so to go through that experience personally and now to be able to provide this solution for so many different families, it is extremely important for us as a company to pay attention to ADU law and how it's helping our senior demographic. So when we found the wellness, we found it on five uh, main principles, uh, proximity, protection, prevention, process, and price. And I'll run through those all um, as you guys can see here. So again, with proximity, um, we understand the importance of being around family having family available for emotional support um, while maintaining our aging loved one's independence is extremely important um, and also being close enough and available to assist when needed. So again, to enhance the independent and the dignity within our senior demographic. Now, community connections are also huge for our seniors. Um, while ADUs offers privacy, seniors can still be active, um, an active part of their community, maintaining social connections, participating in neighborhood activities, and local services, which all contribute to overall well-being. So extremely important to be close to the community and loved ones that we um, possess. And next is per, uh, protection. So again, we we build our wellness pods with our seniors in mind. So protection is big for us. We offer softball flooring, grab bars, uh, roll-in showers, all things to protect from uh, potential injury and illness. Um, but that also talks about the, the, the process of building an ADU. When we go in to build our ADUs, we handle every single aspect. We look to protect our customers from the nuances, the hidden fees, the um, city uh, uh, legislation that may not be that clear but then that we understand to a level that we can protect our customers in the best way possible. And sometimes that's nuanced. So sometimes, for instance, as an example, a city may put out a pre-developed design that's 800 square feet and they have everything worked out for you. All you have to do is get your site plan and resubmit. What they don't tell you is that resubmittal is going to come with a high level of impact fees is going to require a geotechnical engineer to come on site. You're going to have to come up with a stormwater plan and a few other things that are kicked in at a certain square footage. So understanding ADU law is really important to us because then we can go back to our customer and suggest, hey, you might want to drop that from 800 to 749.99 square feet <laughs> um, to help you uh, avoid some of these impact fees and issues. So protection is big for us, not only for our seniors, but also for all of our customers. And then prevention. So um, first I'll talk about prevention from our customers, and then I'll go into a little bit detail about how we use prevention in our wellness pods to help our seniors. So again, in our last example, that's a, a an opportunity for for us not only to protect our customer, but also to prevent um, some potential downfalls in the future in their build. Um, now for our seniors, ADUs provide a, a separate and fully functional living space, which again, allows them to maintain their independence while having access to the care and help they may need. Um, and wellness uh, pods again are developed with accessibility features in mind. So we can do wider doorways, we can do ADA accessible ramps, softball flooring, step-free entra uh, entrance ways, things like that. And for us, one big thing that we're really attacking is there's a huge improvement in senior care over the past decade and what is referred to as senior tech. Now we incorporate our own personal AI learning technology to help prevent common ailments uh, with seniors, including preventing de dehydration, 
bed sores, um, early to, uh, detection of prevent preventable injury and illness, um, and even assist in early detection of memory loss. Now, our uh, AI technology and others like it will continue to evolve to help our aging uh, loved ones maintain privacy and independence, but also um, what's really important to us is anonymity, privacy, and allowing important information to be transcribed between the family members, the care providers, as well as their doctors. So it's really important to us. It's something that's big. Um, if anyone's interested in learning more about our technology, please reach out. Um, we're doing some great things and working with some great folks to make sure that we can provide the best level of care for our seniors. And then uh, process. So process, again, extremely important to us. So from start to finish, we take care of everything. As soon as you sign a contract with us, we take care of the designs, the permitting, the engineering, the construction. And again, like I said, if you do need care services or any services as far as maintenance or um, repair after your build, we're right there to take care of all that for you. So we want to make that process extremely easy for you. Um, again, we're still dealing with construction. So that doesn't mean that they're not going to be some issues during the builds or that the city isn't going to try to impose requirements during those builds. What our promise is, is that when we run into a problem, we'll present that problem to our customer, but we'll already have three different solutions based on our experience and based on the fact that we care. So our process, we try to maintain very simple process for our customers. And again, this is a full-time job. So some folks think, you know, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to build it, which is perfectly fine. Just understand what you have to deal with when you're going into building an ADU. All right. And last but not least, price. So again, when people say prices, that mean the cheapest? Absolutely not. It does not mean the cheapest. It means you're going to get the most value for what you pay for. And one big thing for us is transparency. So when we have a cost or when certain things that we add to our project cost something, we're very transparent about what we're charging our customers for. And last but not least, we offer a flat rate pricing, especially for our pre-developed designs, which means once you sign a contract with us, that's the price you're going to pay. You're not going to have change orders or, or added on costs. You're going to pay that one price, excuse me, and we're going to take care of anything that comes up in that project. So that's really important for us. All right, so that's moving us on to the next section. So next we'll talk about ADUs and property value. Um, and basically explore, excuse me, how exactly you can benefit from placing an ADU on your property. So one quote from a survey done by the Legislative uh, Analysis Office in California is, high home prices here in California also push home ownership out of reach for many. Now that's very easy for a lot of us to understand nowadays, but I think sometime the solution is ignored. And again, that's that middle, uh, that, that missing middle housing where we're talking about something that's affordable for generations, as well as for our senior, our aging demographic who may be on a fixed income. So these are some of the different impacts on property value. Um, obviously, with us uh, suffering from a housing shortage, um, ADUs are going to be extremely high in demand, not only from a standpoint of a benefit for loved ones or benefit for uh, rental property, but just in the fact that it gives you so much flexibility as a homeowner. So first, uh, we can talk about enhanced uh, marketability. And so when we talk about demand and desirab uh, desirability, when we have a house, housing shortage, uh, properties with ADUs are instantly going to go up higher in demand, um, which is going to lead to increased competition amongst buyers. Right now, as most folks are seeing, if you're looking at buying homes right now, the inventory is just extremely low. So as we continue to create opportunities for home ownership um, with ADUs, that is now basically giving you two homes and one or a duplex. So um, that the your property is going to be in higher demand with when you build an ADU on it. Um, next, we'll talk about some of the potential ROI. So again, resale value in California. And I'm going to jump to a next slide real quick just to show you a chart. Um, this, this talks about home value over the past 10 years, and it's looking at medium listing price per square foot. So over the past 10 years, it's risen from over under $480 per square foot to over $720 per square foot. Now, what that means is 
If you have a home currently and you build a 400 square foot addition onto that as an ADU, you're adding that square footage to your property, which means you're adding value to your property, which means, again, when you go to resale, it's going to increase that um, resellability of your property. Now, that doesn't include the fact that when you're looking to resell, when you're talking real estate investors or potentially folks who are looking for to to live in a multi-generational household, you're going to become much more attractive as a property owner. So um, that's something we we go through a lot with our customers to explain. You may be using it for this purpose today, but that doesn't mean you have to ignore what your future looks like. So again, increasing property value, ROI is big. Um, again, flexibility and the potential for uh, the versatility of ADUs is really huge for home buyers. Um, again, from rental units to home offices, guest suites, housing a you know uh, a younger uh, child who's gone off to college, maybe come back home and can't quite yet afford uh, to buy a home on their own. Great opportunity for an ADU. Um, so that's going to be really attractive to potential buyers. And then next, we're going to talk about property appreciation. So again. Um, as we talk about this housing crisis, we can't ignore, ignore the fact that we're in one of the hottest markets, if not the hottest market in real estate in the entire country. So any opportunity to add real estate to your property, to add living space to your property is going to increase in value traditionally as it has in the past 30, 40 years here in California. So um, again, when we're talking about adding square footage, potentially turning a single home into a, 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 a multi a uh, multifamily home going from one unit to two units, potentially even three units if you include a JADU. Um, these are all things that are going to increase uh, your property value. Um, next, we can talk about rental income. So when we look at rental income at the wellness companies, we look at it three different ways. We look at the ability to rent out your home to um, anyone, a family member or uh, you know, just rent it out as a, as a, as a, uh, uh, as a, a landlord. Um, and then second would be the ability to save on rent for a loved one. So if you have a child who's come home from school and they need someone, instead of them going out and looking to rent somewhere else, you bring them home, say, have that savings and cost, be able to save up to, to purchase on their own. So that's another opportunity to save on rental income. And then last, uh, last and definitely not least, the best use that wellness has found is for our aging demographic. When we look at the opportunity, when seniors are looking to downsize, move into assisted living or nursing home care, we know that the average for assisted living care here in the Bay Area is about $4,500. And that's not including nursing care facilities, which reaches up to an average of $10,000. So now when we look at the savings and costs on those, that's where you really start to make an impact on the market as well as you're retaining residents, you're maintaining proximity and all those other things. So when we look at housing for our aging loved ones, um, a wellness pod absolutely is a beautiful idea, but also ADUs in general are a huge opportunity for the state of California to provide that housing for our aging uh, demographic. So those are ways that we can absolutely create more value um, on your property, um, as well as uh, like we know, as your property, as we move further and further, your property is going to gain value here in California. It's very, it's been, I think 2008 through 2010 was the last time our market suffered. And then we bounced back by 59%. So um, again, we know longevity property is going to increase here in California. All right. As we can see, this chart shows. Okay, next. I'm going to touch base, excuse me, on our designing and building of ADUs. And again, when I'm touching base on all these, this is just an introduction. What we'll do over the next nine weeks is we'll have some folks who are specialized in these fields come in, join me, give their expertise, go really far into depth in some of these areas to let you know exactly what needs to be done at these different aspects of building an ADU. So, Right now, I'll go into the engineering and designing phase, which is the first phase. This is the fun phase where you get to see your ideas come to life. And um, this is where you really want to work with a professional. Um, some folks are experienced in design and engineering, but there's so many considerations to take in when you're looking at 
uh, designing a home. Again, this is not a shed. This isn't a box. We're talking home. So there's Title 24 requirements, HERS requirements, electrical requirements, plumbing, uh, mechanical. There's structural engineering that goes into it. So this is where you really want to pay attention to make sure that you're designing something beautiful because it's going to last you a lifetime. So um, again, what we do, we work with professional architects, professional engineers to make sure it's done right. Um, we take heavy into consideration the use, not only the current use, but the future use of the space. So currently you may be using it for a loved one, but you may say, hey, in the future, I'm looking at turning this into a rental property. What's the most attractive unit to build if I want to do that? What's the most, what's the biggest ROI on my build? So all that goes into our design process. Next, we have permitting and utility connections. Um, permitting fees, again, we've talked about it a little bit. You start getting into the nuance of size of the unit, what they're going to charge, who you have to submit paperwork and documents to. Um, and with the new legislation, they've made it really, they really simplified it a lot, but it's still a process. You still have to go back and forth with cities and understand you have fire department, you have PG&E, you have the uh, whatever your local uh, sewer and water supply utilities are. One major consideration that uh, we've run into and we take um, into consideration very early on in our projects is PG&E. We live in a state where fires can be a potential issue. Um, electrical service can be a potential issue. So people don't realize when you start a project, you should contact immediately all these utilities to make sure that you understand the timeline for them to come out. So you're not without electricity for an extended amount of time or exactly what may be uh, uh, impact on building an ADU. For instance, in Oakland, there's a consideration of sewer lateral. So if your sewer lateral has roots or cracks and needs to be repaired, that is now the responsibility of the homeowner, and you may trigger that repair when you go to build an ADU. So understanding those nuances is extremely important. All right, and last but not least, we have here the actual construction and management of construction. So the big thing, like we said, folks that have gone through construction understand there's going to be some nuance to delays, costs, change orders, um, the unforeseen uh, issues that you weren't expecting um, as far as electrical hookups or location of uh, sewer line hookups, things like that. So we do this all within wellness through our project manager. So every project gets a specific project manager that handles that project from the beginning all the way through the end so that we catch all these small nuances and make sure we get ahead of everything. So again, those are some things to consider. Um, and then some additional costs that you may run into, finan uh, financing costs, or if you're talking about interest rates, really understanding that. Um, how does this affect your property tax, which we could talk about a little bit. Rental income, where do you find renters for potential ADUs? And then again, some of the tax benefits that you may be able to, to get if you understand exactly um, uh, who to talk to, uh, what nuances to go through. So for instance, when you add solar, do you get a tax rebate? Uh, can, you, um, can you potentially get deductions for the construction of an ADU? Absolutely. But understanding how that works is really important when you go into a new ADU build. Oh, sorry. And then last but not least is our overcoming challenges. So how does wellness overcome challenges and how should you as a homeowner, if you're going into a build alone or if you're a contractor, how do you avoid some of these uh, challenges that are naturally going to come along with building an ADU? So first is a permitting process, potential delays, a bureaucracy within a city or uh, submitting the correct documents to the city departments, um, the municipalities or uh, the local utility company. So those are all things, like I said, get in touch with all those folks early on if you're not familiar with those processes and potentially some of those documents. For us at Wellness, we try to maintain very close relationships with all the utility companies and with all the cities that we build in. So we understand the nuance of Dublin's going to have different submittals in Oakland. Um, there's a different process for Hayward than there is for Mountain House. And for our ability to understand that, gives us the ability to avoid some of those issues. If you're looking at contractors, look at folks who built locally in the cities that you're looking to build in. They're going to have an understanding of what that process looks like to, for submittals and potential risk. All right, next we have construction costs, materials in the market, um, unexpected expenses and overspending and delays. 
So these are all things we watch very closely. Um, for instance, uh, I believe it was May last year, we had an increase in materials and construction costs by over 800%. Now, something like that may not be, uh, you may not be as familiar with if you're not watching it on a day-to-day -day basis, not familiar with the industry, and then you go to buy your plywood after you built your framing and it went from $25 a sheet to $80 per sheet. Now that can significantly increase the cost of your bill. That's why we work with flat rate pricing. The way that wellness is designed is we buy our materials up front, we're able to get a bulk discount for our customers, and then we're able to pass that savings along to our customers. So we're not as affected by the market, but as that market changes, you have to be highly aware because again, that most companies, most contractors will give you a 10 day period that their bid is valid for. Because if you don't lock in, they know the prices can increase tomorrow. They know they can increase in a month. So um, it's really important to understand how that affects the cost of your build, um, some of those concerns. Unforeseen costs. So again, familiarity with the area, um, understanding the, the nuance of construction when you're doing a new electrical service or a plumbing service. What are some of those, some of those costs that you're, you may not be quite aware of? That's why it's really good to work with um, experienced contractors or an experienced company. Next, utilities. So city requirements, complex re uh, regulations, lack of responsiveness, limitations, and restrictions. So again, not only what's on the books, but what's coming down the line. Some of those restrictions as far as electrical requirements, solar requirements, um, uh, potential sewer lateral issues or sewer or water supply issues. Understanding some of the nuance of those are really important. So working with either a local contractor, being really up to date on local legislation, which means contacting your city departments, contacting your utility companies, and understanding what you're going to have to really go through to get your ADU built. And then last but not least, long-term use. So future accessibility needs, rentability and, and functionality, future changes in reg, uh, regulations. So again, when we're talking with our customers and Recently, we had a conversation with a, a customer who was looking at our wellness pod um, for a potential aging in place application. Well, we take everything in consideration from design, functionality of the space, and future use. So initially, this may be a rental property, but if you're looking to move into this unit somewhere down the line, you're, you may want to consider what are the accessibility issues that I may face if I'm aging in place here? Will I potentially be in a wheelchair? Will I potentially have a walker? Um, should this be up on piers with a deck and a three foot or a three uh, flight of three stairs, or should it be lower to the ground where an accessibility ramp can be placed um, very easily? So all those considerations are big for us. And again, that goes both ways. So it goes if you're using it for a rental property and potentially using it for aging in place, or currently you may be using it for aging in place and looking to sell the property in the future. So the ability to have that flex flex space and that ADU on your property can be really important to resale value and future use. So we consider all those things when we build. All right. And that pretty much wraps up um, my presentation here. Again, I look forward to going into, into depth on a lot of these topics in our future webinars. I know this is just a quick lunch webinar and hopefully I provided some value to everybody that attended. Um, my goal is to continue to add value, not only let you know what the wellness company does, but let you know what you should be looking out for when you're building an ADU. This is an excellent opportunity in a time that we live in where some of these regulations have been lifted to allow us to add this missing middle housing to our property. So I'm an absolute advocate for ADUs and hopefully um, me doing this webinar series will encourage more people to look into building ADUs and potentially working with wellness to get a wellness pot put on your property. Right. And then after the Q&A session, and again, you can drop your questions in the chat. Um, we'll go through and answer any questions that pop up. And after the Q&A session, um, here's my information if anyone wants to get in touch with me. Um, uh, again, my name is Kari Grant. I'm the CEO of the wellness company and Hopefully today I can, I provided some value to everyone here. All right, thanks Bakari. That was really informative. I took a lot of notes. <laughs> uh, we do have a question regarding subdividing lots. So um, when you were talking about the junior and the detached and everything else. So say you have some property and you wanted to subdivide 
Um, is there a maximum amount of units that you can put on your lot? Does it vary by your community? How, how does that work? Absolutely. So this is a, a dual question. And unfortunately, a lot of these questions that are going to be more specific to project, uh, specific projects are going to have the general answer of um, absolutely we help with subdividing lots, but that's going to be dependent on the local jurisdiction. So again, it's going to be project based. So I would say reach out, send me an email and we'll get you in touch, get you a consultation, get someone out to your uh, property. And that way they can look at your specific um, build and give you advice on that. Now, there is a maximum number of units when you subdivide a parcel. So when you subdivide, currently you can build an ADU, which now you have a main dwelling and an ADU. You can split the property and then you can build up to one more ADU on that property in most jurisdictions. Now that's a total of four. Before what they had in legislation was you could technically split a property build a J ADU and then build an additional ADU, which basically turned one property into six different units. Now I understand completely why they made some of those restrictions because they don't want developers coming in and putting that on repeat and basically turning one parcel into uh, six different housing units, creating a, a issue with um, overpopulation of a neighborhood. But at the same time, if you do have the space and the law does allow, we absolutely help you. Uh, figure that out. Terrific. Um, here's another question. This is one I've heard come up um, just in being out at events. And it's, do we only build wellness pods or are we able to do conversions, uh, garages, basements, that sort of thing? Absolutely. So I would say we don't only do wellness pods. Um, we specialize in wellness pods because of we believe that it's a well-designed unit and it's taken many things into consideration. We do absolutely do conversions as well. We've done conversions, we've done additions. Um, so we're open to any project and it's a project by project base where we either believe we're gonna be the best for that job or we don't believe we're gonna be the best for that job. And our sales affiliates will absolutely take that into consideration when they do a consultation, which by the way, all of our consultations are free right now. All right. Um, let's see the another question we have. Um, how do your pre-construction services work? Like surveying, arborists, working with something that is in addition to what would be the norm? Absolutely. So what we really try to do, um, and this is the reason why we go with the project management approach, we want the entire project to operate cohesively. When we look at pre-construction services such as surveys, arborist work, engineering, design, maybe a geotechnical um, uh, a report, we try to incorporate all that into our pre-construction. So going into a project, first we do discovery and find out what, what are the priorities of the customer. And then we try to find uh, the best solution to create the or to, to uh, bring those priorities to fruition. So for instance, if you live on a hillside and you need a geotechnical engineer, and you need a survey, and then you're looking at going into design and build. What we will want to do first is understand what are your priorities? Who's going to be using the space? How big do you want to go? What's most important to you? Because we may get a geotechnical engineer and get a report back that says, we can't build that 500 square feet, but we can build 400 square feet, just 10 feet away from where they would like to build it. Well, if that's not that important to our customer, then we say, absolutely, we're going to go ahead and do it. Now, if that is important to our customer, then we go back with them and discuss the different solutions, and then we come up with something that works for them. But when we, some companies will offer pre-construction service separate from their entire project, which then makes a fragmented project, which can cost you more time, cost you more money down the line. And what could take four weeks can uh, end up extending out to about eight weeks if you're not careful. So we try to do it cohesively, but absolutely all of those pre-construction services are included with our bills. Great. Um, financing. So what financing options do we have? And um, is there anybody in particular that we would point the customers to? Um, yes, again, another nuanced question, but uh, we do offer in-house financing and we, our product, because of 
where the interest rates were for so long. And now with the increase in interest, it's a complete second. So we don't, all of our customers don't necessarily want to touch their original loan. So we offer a second, um, completely separate loan product. So you don't have to touch that great interest rate. Um, and that is, again, in-house financing powered by local credit union. Um, we go through an extremely due, our extreme due diligence to make sure that we're dealing with companies that share the same principles that we share so that we're providing the best possible services to our customers. Now, we do also, also point folks in the direction of other financing options. But again, that's through trusted, reliable sources where you may want to refi, you may want to take out HELOC, or you may just want to get an ADU-specific loan like the one we offer. Great. So they can pretty much get in touch with us here at the office and we can point them in the direction depending on what they need. Absolutely. So using the information on the screen, um, go and checking out our website. We do have wearewellness.com forward slash financing if you want to check that information out. And yeah, or you could just call up our showroom and uh, talk to one of our friendly sales affiliates. All right. Um do you have a timeline that you recommend in working with a wellness if they're somewhat interested in a pod, but you're not quite ready to move forward? Do, sorry, can you repeat that one? Yeah. So is there a timeline that you would suggest if you're if you're interested in a pod, but you're not quite ready to move forward? Um, so the time considerations for dealing with the city and that sort of thing, you want to pre-plan for that? Absolutely. So that's a really good question. That's one that's come up quite a bit recently. Um, and what I would suggest is, is if you're interested in building an ADU, this is one of the big reasons we're offering free consultations right now is some folks just want to know, can I do it? And what are the restrictions that I, I have to be beholden to? Our free consultation will let you know all that information up front. Our sales affiliates are extremely well, uh, well uh, knowledge knowledgeable in ADUs so they can give you the information you need. Now, when it comes to when you should pull the trigger to working with wellness, if you've decided that you want an ADU, that's the point that you should start working with wellness, your contractor, your architect or designer, because you may think it's going to take a, a certain amount of time, but that's not consist considering design time, uh, engineering time, permitting, response to comments, uh, pre-development. So if you need demolition or survey or any of those reports, it may take up to six months to a year just to get to the point where you're ready for construction. So if you get in touch with us early, we can give you a realistic timeline on if you say, I want to build by next summer. Perfect. This is a time to get in touch with us because now we can talk about what does that design look like? Let's get an official site visit. Let's get any surveys or pre-development uh, 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 services that you may need in place right now so that by time springtime comes the next year, we have permits in hand and we're ready to build. So All right. as soon as you're ready, as soon as you've decided, yes, I want an ADU, that's when you need to be looking for either architect, engineer, contractor, or calling us at Wellness to get going with that process. All right. Very nice. Uh, well, we are right on time. It's one o'clock. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for attending and let you know that this is going to be bi-weekly. So we are going to be doing this on Thursday, the 31st of August. It's going to be at the same time, noon to one. And Bakari, can you talk a little bit about what we're going to be discussing at that? Absolutely. So over the next, I'm going to, if everyone has that screen there. Okay, I'm going to stop that. So over the next couple of months, we have a couple other webinars coming up. Like Laura said, they'll be bi-weekly with the similar topics that you've seen here, but we'll just go a little bit more in depth on a lot of these things. So, excuse me, our next webinar will be on August 31st, and it's going to be ADU design and permitting process. So again, a really good question came up on when should someone sign with wellness? We're going to talk about the nuance of what it's going to take to get through the design process and then what it takes to get through the permitting process, which we consider to be some of the longest uh, potential uh, points in the build process. So 
really going into depth, um, looking to get a special guest on. So um, look forward to that one. And then following that one, we're going to talk about again, which would be extremely uh, closely related to that same question is what does a customer journey look like when someone decides they want to buy an ADU? What are the steps you can look to go through and how long do those steps typically take? So we'll probably bring on uh, one of our sales leads, potentially our COO, Bobby, to give some in-depth explanation about what does that sales journey look like for our customers. So those will be our next two webinars, again, bi-weekly. So that'll be the end of August and the beginning of September for those next two webinars. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that really sets Wellness apart is the communication and the what to expect factor. So that's that's something that consumers can really appreciate. Absolutely. And again, transparency is so big because again, starting in the senior space, um, we try to make sure that from start to finish, folks know what's going on, how it's happening. I mean, we go as far as having a specific project management application where you can check on the daily progress of your of your build. So um, it's extremely important to us here at Wellness. All right. Great. Well, with that, thank you again for your time, Makari. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we hope we see everybody on Thursday the 31st again here at noon. Perfect. Thank you so much, Laura. And All right. Bye.